Hey friends. Hey Rufus, look. There's Rufus. Welcome to a new Monday video. Happy Monday. Hope you all are doing well. A new Monday discussion, Monday motivation. I don't know how motivating these are right now, but they're good discussions. And uh, we're continuing to go through some of the suggestions people made for topics of these Monday videos. Please leave me discussions, things you like to see discussed, talked about, um, and I'll try to tie them in to you know, some mental health, some things that are good um, as best I can uh, to keep in the theme with Monday Motivation. Last week we talked about Momocon. You've seen a lot of Momocon coverage. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I got the pop here with me. It is uh, Thursday morning. About, what is it? 7.45 right before work. What's up, dude? You want to hold hands? We can hold hands. So this week's discussion point comes from Andrew Bogish. His suggestion was um, talk about your, meaning my, personal history with collecting and my collection, which is certainly a thing I've talked about um, fragmented from time to time over the history of this channel, but not a lot recently. And I know that um, certainly the channel has grown quite a bit um, over, the, over the recent year and a half especially, and so maybe a lot of you aren't familiar. So I think a personal history of my collection, not just the details of how my collection came to be, but... Uh, my connection to it all, I think it's a good topic. And I think it's a good thing to think about for yourself. Like, why do you collect? And like we talked about for 20 weeks. Uh, but specifically, why do you collect? And where does it come from? So the for me, the history of collecting and my collection specifically. Uh, growing up, we did not, um, you know, my, my parents certainly worked very hard. Uh, my father is a minister. Um, my mom worked as a teacher for a while and then worked um, in um, like co the community center, community help uh, with the state government. What are you doing? Why you want to just eat that thing? Huh? It's got this rubber bottle, root beer bottle that we got at Myrtle Beach. And um, I mean, it's for him to chew and like rip pieces off. But he wants to get it and rip like three tiny pieces off each day and put it away. And he doesn't eat them. He just leaves them on the ground. Okay. It's just an interesting thing. Uh, but so we were certainly not going to be a family that was uh, buying all the action figures as they came out. In fact, uh, the earliest toys action figures I can remember uh, were LJN wrestlers, big rubber guys, um, specifically Iron Sheik and Georgie Animal Steel. And Iron Sheik had the, the big elbow. And those lived in a bucket underneath the sink in the, what now as an adult I would guess would be called the guest bathroom. Um, where I would take a bath when I was a little kid. And I'm thinking I'm probably like three, four, uh, maybe five kind of time frame, something like that. I'm pretty young. And what I remember is I would play with those in the bathtub. And I would take that Iron Sheik one with the elbow and I'd hit Kimberly with it. Elbow drop, elbow drop, elbow drop. That's what I would do with those wrestlers. They were a toy, purely. Um, I did not collect LJN rubber wrestlers. In fact, I don't think I ever got another one. Uh, now, I, I have a couple of those guys. Um, I have a little tiny area that I don't really ever show of my collection that are like very specifically childhood type things. Um, but I don't really show that it, it lives in a different area, but it has a couple of those LJ guys. Um, so that's the first thing I remember. Then as shows like Thundercats, He-Man, you know, started to come on, which a lot of those we weren't necessarily allowed to watch, uh, specifically He-Man. Um, I can remember, you know, he holds up the sword and says, by the power of Grayskull, and my mom made me turn it off. And I said, mom, why, why can't I watch that? And I, you know, maybe, I don't know, I was a kid, so who knows what I thought. But I remember her saying, uh, until he holds up that sword and says, by the power of Jesus Christ, I have the power, you're not going to watch it. And I was like, he's, mommy's never going to say that. That's not what he's going to say. So I didn't get to watch He-Man. But Thundercats, I could watch. Um, so He-Man, we had to like sneak. Just like Scooby-Doo, for some reason, we had to sneak, I guess, because it had ghosts. And, but they had swords. And um, then most formatively for me, The Hobbit, uh, the Rankin-Bass Hobbit, and then Kimberly reading The Hobbit. And Lord of the Rings to me. And again, this is, I'm now probably five, six, I'm very young. And those things, uh, people had swords. And I wanted a sword. 
but my, my parents were very much, they weren't going to buy me weapons, you know, guns, BB guns, swords. They didn't want me because they saw what I would do with the Iron Sheik. And so they didn't they hit your sister with it. But they did buy me the Armor of God playset from, you know, like a Christian bookstore. And it had the Sword of the Spirit. Well, the Sword of the Spirit became the Sword of Omens. It became Sting. It became He-Man, the Power Sword. It became all those swords. And mom just thought I was running around with the Sword of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And I was saying it was everything else. Um, so those are like my earliest kind of toy-y memories. And so we had G.I. Joe. And, and my recollection is that, and Battle Beast. Those are two things I had uh, youngest that I can remember um, before we get to Turtles. And I think that's probably because they're low cost. I, you know, I think a three and three quarter G.I. Joe wasn't that expensive. Certainly a Battle Beast wasn't that expensive. What is it, buddy? What is it? I don't know what you're dropping down there. A same bottle? I don't even see it. I can't do it right now. I'll do it in a minute. Because um, they're probably low cost. Certainly never had new G1 Transformers. They're too expensive. Um, but we had a, a decent amount of G.I. Joe. Um, and every once in a while, a vehicle. You know, a small vehicle. Those would be what I would get for Christmas, uh, birthdays. That's a ball. I hear a ball. Those types of things. Uh, so that's where my affinity from G.I. Joe comes from. Is It's one of the earliest toys I can remember having, like, a few of. And uh, setting up displays right and having them fight each other and do things to each other um probably the first true i'm playing with the figures the way that they hoped i would play with the figures versus i'm using it to terrorize my sister uh, and at this time victoria's not born or she's like a baby baby she's an infant so that's where my affinity comes from i've been a drawn to battle beast um but i don't i can't go down that road and plus they've gotten pretty expensive uh, but then that when things really change is turtles and so as turtles show up on the scene, uh, I can just vivid memories of playing with Ninja Turtles uh, right away, loving the show, uh, going to neighbor's house, playing with them. And somehow or another, we were able to get a lot of those. And often I was able to get two of those. Now, at that time, I was, so I'm like seven-ish, seven, eight time frame, maybe eight, nine. And so maybe I have ways to earn my own earn my own money a little bit. Uh, at that time, you're probably I'm starting to get things like other people are giving me a few bucks because you know, I did good at I did got good grades not often or like little league football or I don't know something right. You get five bucks, you get ten bucks. You have more opportunities to earn a thing as a little kid. At that time, you have more responsibilities, so you you do things. I don't really know. I also had a lot of friends that had them. And so, Turtles then became the thing that I collected. Didn't do as much G.I. Joe anymore. Kind of fell out of love with that. I think that's around the time they start being like Neon Colors, and Tiger Force, and some of that stuff. Uh, Ninja Force. And from then on, I collected. From that point on. From the point Turtles introduced. I wanted to have them all. I could see them all in the back of the box. I wanted to get them all. Uh, I didn't want to, if I play with it too much and it got messed up, I want a second one to keep in the package. Uh, that's when it really started for me is with the Ninja Turtles line. That's why that line is so close to my heart. And so then over the next, now we have a big jump. So I did a little bit with the Kenner Batman. I thought those were cool, but not much. Um, it was primarily Turtles. And then I just stopped collecting like a lot of us as, as, as boys do. Uh, as I became a teenager and I'm playing ball and, and girls and, you know, whatever, parties, you know, the high school world, right? And you don't have your action figure collection. That's, that's a career. Luffy, buddy, you're ready for me to stop filming this video, huh? That is a social status limiting. Rufus, limiting decision to have your action figures. And like, we remember, right? 40-year-old version used to be the way that we were all thought of. Now it's a little more socially acceptable. But that movie came out as a major movie 15 or 20 years ago, making fun of us all with Detolfs, with hot toys and Detolfs. That's what they were making fun of. And so you didn't do it as much, but I kept them. I kept them. And then in like my 20s, uh, I got back into it kind of. And like, uh, probably around being like 23, 24, I had a bunch of my turtles. I picked up uh, ones I didn't have. No, you don't need that. You don't need that squeaker. 
I picked them up around that time frame, like filled out my collection, and I completed based on what I had from childhood and then what um, I picked up at a time where things weren't that expensive. Uh, a complete run from like the, hey, no, I know, you want that squeaker. From like the 1988 run all the way to 93, had all of them, all of the turtles. On card and loose. Yes, Hotspot. Yes, Scratch. Yes, the Samurai Shogun Turtles. Yes, the Sumo Turtles. The Dinosaur. All of it. And proudly actually displayed that. You don't need that squeaker. The people can't hear me talk if you had that squeaker. Just wait like three minutes. To, it, we can finish. Okay? Is that okay with you? Here, I'll throw it way over there. And now you're not going to go get it. You're just staring at it like it's the word. Ah, he's gone. Uh, so proudly displayed that in the guest room, but did proudly display that. I didn't care. I was, I was happy to have it. I enjoyed it. It was something that made me happy, and I really liked it. Um, and that was, things weren't that expensive back then. I mean, you could pick up original soft head for like 15 bucks, a mint on card. This wasn't that expensive. Now, at the same time, I was also collecting video games. Um, I had a bunch of our childhood video games, and Kimberly and I were very much into RPGs. So we had Chrono Trigger, Earthbound, Link to the Past, um, Secret of Mana, some of the really nice Super Nintendo games that were ours that we had played, in addition to, you know, the normal stuff, Mario World and Turtles in Time and all that. Plus a bunch of Nintendo. These are ours. We never, we just kept them. And I was at the time a teacher. And I, you know, it was not a, a great paying salary. And I wanted to be able to do more things and go to conventions. But also like take my family on vacations and help my parents with finances and all these different things. And so I made the decision to go to graduate school. And uh, it's expensive. And to get your master's degree, you can, it's not easy to get loans and scholarships and such, especially at a gap of like seven years after I finished undergrad, before I went. And so I, Rufus, stop. You can get this weaker in a minute. It's under the couch, he's losing his mind trying to get to it. The, I had to find a way to pay for it. And so I uh, sold everything. And at the time, I started watching video game channels on YouTube. They were just starting to show up. Um, actually, that's, that's wrong. It's a little bit later. So I sold my Turtles collection to pay for graduate school. That's what I did. And that was a complete collection. And because I had a complete collection for my rules, I didn't collect anything else. I was done. I had actually finished a collection. And while I was a collector, I didn't actively collect anymore. And, dude, you really think we have to squeak it right now? We have to right at this moment? They're enjoying the show, I'm sure. So, I sold it all, and that's how I paid for graduate school. And my promise to myself was it was hard, right? And, and prices had gotten much more expensive in that, like, seven years. And so I realized I can never get these back. I'm sure I can today, I could, but I'm not going to. I needed that to be a place in time where I've sold all these childhood toys, recent acquired toys, whatever, to fund the next step of my life. You've seen Josh do that recently, you know, selling his toys to pay for his engagement ring, selling toys to put a down payment on his house. Um, you know, it's a good thing, right? If, if your hobby can fund that stuff later, do you ever get back all the money you put into it in modern times? Probably not. Not really. Um, maybe, but probably not. But then I did because a lot of those I never paid anything for because they were my childhood ones or I had bought them for three ninety nine or th four for $10 or whatever. And so I made pretty good money and I paid off my graduate school. That's how I went to graduate school. Then I promised myself I would build back a collection bigger than I ever had before when I had the money to do it. So I had to chase my career and I didn't collect anything, except I sold the video games. And I finished my graduate school and I have to start moving for work. I changed careers, I'm not a teacher anymore. I enter my company now and I start getting into business consulting. And 
I moved to Alabama and then I moved to Oklahoma. And in this time, I'm more and more distant from my family and I start to watch YouTube more. And I run across uh, who are now Pixel Game Squad, but they were Retro Liberty at the time, uh, the Game Chasers. And I see video game hunters at flea markets. And I'm like, I have all, I've done that. Yard sales, flea markets. I love that. That looks fun. And so me and my buddy, his name's Morgan in Oklahoma, we started doing that. We weren't filming it, but we started doing it. In fact, I did film some of it, and it used to be on this YouTube channel, but I've taken that stuff down um, when I kind of had a new start to the channel. And we would hunt video games. And he wanted to have a complete Atari 2600 collection, which is quite a, a task. And we'd go to things, and we'd do it. And I loved it. And that's how I started filming it, specifically for YouTube, was in Oklahoma. And I thought, this is fun. I should share this. Uh, I had always filmed dumb stuff or take pictures of dumb stuff or we just do dumb stuff, challenges with Steve and whatever. But at that time, I still not collecting except for video games. Then I need to move back to Atlanta from Oklahoma. Expensive, don't have much money. I sell off my video game collection at that point. And I come back with just basically nothing. Like I moved back here with nothing. But now I have a pretty good job. I'm like, all right, I'm going to build it up. And so then I start to build it all back up over the last 10 years of my collection. Prom fulfilling the promise I made to myself 12 years ago, 13 years ago, that I would build back the collection that I always wanted. So I guess it's been about nine years since I started rebuilding. it, And that's what we have today. That's what we have today. Now, it certainly has evolved uh, over the last nine years from Marvel Legends, where I had every Marvel Legend. I, I struggle with the completest. So I try to get every other thing, but Marvel Legends I wanted and I had a lot of selects. I had a lot of DC uh, Arrowverse figures because that's what I was into. I've been buying Hot Toys forever, as, that whole nine years. So my Hot Toys collection exploded. I thought about getting every MMS, which is a, a ridiculous thing. But at one point I was under like 50. I had, and they were at like 300 and I had all but 50. Um, but that's a ridiculous thing to pursue. And then I started doing YouTube and, uh, oh, there's Mezco. Oh, there's Mayfax. Oh, there's SH Figure Arts. And it grows and it grows and it grows. And I realized now I was just building a collection just to build the collection. I was just trying to fulfill my promise to myself. And I was going crazy with it. Like, it had already well exceeded better than I ever had before. I won't go back to the Retro Turtles. And so then when the fire sale happened, which is unbelievably now three years ago, and I sold off Hot Toys and Mezco and lots of import stuff and the rest of the Marvel Legends and whatever. So I only want the things that really tie into my childhood that are modern representations of my childhood. So NECA Turtles, Super 7 Turtles, G.I. Joe Classified, uh, Super 7 Thundercats. And then the modern properties I love the most. So Game of Thrones, Lord of Rings, Walking Dead, Harry Potter. And that was going to be it. And it still pretty much is it. And Mythic Legions. It still pretty much is it. It's just all of those lines have grown exponentially. Now, at that time, Natalie and Kai, I had not met them yet. And so I didn't have much anime. I got rid of my Dragon Ball stuff. Not because I didn't like it, but just because it didn't make the cut. It was one of the last things, but it didn't make the cut. And then as the family came and, and they're into, they like the Marvel stuff too, and they like the DC stuff too, and they like Game of Thrones, and they like Harry Potter, but they also like anime. And my collection wasn't representative of what my life was. It wasn't representative of what my family was. And so we grew and made half the collection anime and let them get their Sailor Moon stuff or their Avatar or Demon Slayer or My Hero Academia. And then we collect Dragon Ball together or Seven Deadly Sins or Jujutsu Kaisen or whatever. And it is now a representative of us. Just as my original collection was a representative of the thing I loved as a child, Ninja Turtles. And then it became a representative of what I want to be. I want it to be better than I ever had before, which was <laughs> everything. It is now a representation of our family. Basically, everything that we collect, all of us participate in. I think that is true. Mythic Legions, the girls helped. We just did the Pop and Swap Challenge. Um, they have an interest in it. It's not a massive interest in it, but they have an interest in it. Certainly Marvel, DC, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones. They don't have as much of interest in Walking Dead. Um, that's kind of just me. I think they don't, they don't like the gore and the zombies of it. That's just me, but it's one of my favorite things. And then all the anime stuff, all of it, except for, you know, with that tiny exception, we kind of do together. We enjoy together. And the main things we buy, like we have Momocon this week, I won't buy a single action figure. 
we will buy experiences. We will buy getting autographed pops and skateboards and shirts, memories that are meaningful to us. Because now we collect as a family. That's our personal attachment. And so I always say you collect to connect with something, with someone. And now when I had gotten out of a lot of collecting in 2020, fire sale time, now I'm connected more than ever to my family to my loved ones. And it's less where I'm connected to my friends and what they're collecting, uh, which is what it was for a number of years, because that's how we connected. And you don't have to have things to connect. I talked last week about going to convention. You can connect at a convention. You don't have to have things to connect. But you have to have a thing to talk about. And so you collect to connect, and, and that's the way we do it as a family. And it makes it so much more fulfilling, so much more enjoyable. Um, we certainly have slowed down. Uh, it doesn't look like it. We still spend quite a bit of money, but compared to what it was, when when so when you're seeing me have, um, you know, here are some Mythic Legions and and here are some Nindoroids for Kaya and here is some Cuposkits for Natalie. Uh, most of those things are like twenty or thirty bucks, and it used to be there's seven Hot Toys that were three hundred dollars each. So the the cost is certainly not what it once was. Um, but we're enjoying it more than ever. I'm enjoying collecting more than ever, doing it with the family. But I'm also enjoying the experience more and not just the stuff. It's not just an accumulation of stuff. So that's my personal story of collecting. You see, I really have collected in some way or another all these years, but it has always been to connect with something. And so uh, I think that's a good topic. I'd love to hear your personal stories of collecting down in the description below. I think it is great for your, down in the comments. If you could write it in the description, you probably hack my YouTube account and put something up people will watch and make some money. Uh, the, I love hearing stories of how people collect. There's plenty of you that are new that have only just started collecting. There's plenty of you that are like me that have done it your whole life. So I'd love to hear why, why you collect, what you're into, what helps you connect uh, as an individual. And uh, I look forward to talking to you more about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the MomoCon coverage. You have a Big Bad Toy Store Pile of Blue unboxing coming on Wednesday. And uh, then I think uh, Life of the Dubs will be its uh, Spider-Verse weekend. So we will be doing that and whatever else comes. We've got some toys to open from that pile of blue, so that may happen too. So hope you have a great Monday. It is June. It is summer. It's hot here, at least. But a lot of fun summertime planned. Have a good week. I'll talk to you next time. Squeeze it.